Welcome to Biz Help For You with host Candy Messer. Entrepreneurs like to focus on the big picture, like profitability, success, and a smooth running organization. But there always seems to be those little things like taxes, employee compensation, laws, regulations, and more. Now you can get the answers you need in one place. Join us today as we break it all down for you. Now, here's your host, Candy Messer. Hello and welcome to Biz Help For You with Candy Messer. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our last episode, Stop Discounting and Instead Use Value Add Incentives. And I hope you are able to join us for future shows as well. If you haven't been able to listen to all the episodes, you can find them on our YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as multiple favorite podcast platforms. If you'd like to receive notifications on when they have been uploaded, please like and subscribe. And if there are topics you'd find beneficial or questions you have, please feel free to reach out to me at media at abandp.com. Now let's learn a little bit about our guest today. Blaine is a TEDx speaker and leading authority in personal implementation and consistency. He is America's only chief results officer. He's a habit master with documented streaks of 1,516 days in a row and counting. As a top LinkedIn connector, he has over 25,000 first level connections. Blaine graduated from Purdue University and Stanford University Social Entrepreneurship Program. He's powered by Selffluence, a personal development and training company. He's excited to share with you ways you can, can take control of your life by taking control of yourself. So Blaine, welcome to the show. Listen, Candy, thank you so much for having me on. And let me just start by saying thank you for putting this podcast together. I know it's a lot of work, um, mm -hmm. but I do feel like you're touching lives not yet born. Somebody 20 years from now, 30 years from now are going to pick up these tips uh, and their business is going to be helped by you. So thank you for doing what you're doing. And, and I hope we can add some value to the listeners today. Well, thanks for you know saying thank you to me too. <laughs> I appreciate that. Doesn't happen very often. Uh, <laughs> But um, I do want to just say first, before I get into questions that I have for you, I always love to hear a little bit more background of my guests. You know, I read a little bit of a bio, but doesn't have a lot of details. So tell me, how did you get started and how did you become America's chief results officer? Uh, yes, yes. Good story here. And so I, I really had... I had two, um, two moments of dawning comprehension that led to me becoming America's only chief results officer. The first one was actually back in college. So I went to Purdue University, actually met my wife there. We've been married 30 years, which is great. Um, but <clears throat> I saw an ad and I've always been like a seeker. And I think a lot of your listeners are probably seekers. How can I do better? How can I be better? And I saw this ad for the book, Thinking Grow Rich, and actually an mm -hmm. audio cassette tape. So I'm dating myself back in the <laughs> 80s. Uh, but it was for an audio cassette, cassette read by Earl Nightingale. And I got this cassette tape and then I ended up buying the book, Think and Grow Rich. And many people have heard the book. And, and in college, when I read it, I realized in that moment that, uh, you know, what you think about, you bring about. So I later made this little saying called Waitaba. But, but that, that moment of dawning comprehension was that, like, I have some control over, like, where my life goes, what I decide to focus on, and really what you focus on expands. So that, that was a, kind of a, a big moment for me. The second moment came when my son was one year old. My, my degree was in computer science science and I had a, a software job and I was on a business trip and I came back from the business trip. My son's about a year old and he's giving me the cold shoulder when I get back. And I said, Beth, what, why is Bo giving me the cold shoulder? And she said, well, you were gone so long. He kind of forgot who you were. And mm. I was like, what? Like that really kind of hit me like emotionally. So that night I made this clarifying decision that no matter what it takes, I'm going to be a work from home dad. Mm, uh, and nice. so it took me a year. So I started two different businesses, but a year later, uh, I had enough money saved and those businesses were making enough money that I left that job uh, and I became this work from home dad. And that was 27 years ago. So for the last 27 years, now the kids have, have left the nest. Um, but, but what that afforded me was to be there for my son. But what it also afforded me was the time to do self-development. And so I had a lot of time to do self-development and dig into all that stuff. And I realized that God kind of put me on the planet to help people take control of their lives by taking control of themselves. So I started this company called Selffluence. 
the art and science of influencing yourself, kind of like the power you already have to influence yourself. You don't need anything new. You don't need anything extra. You don't need new software for your brain. You, you have everything you need to do what you need to do. Uh, and so I started working with mastermind groups, helping them get results kind of on a weekly basis. And they said, hey, look, you're, you're our chief results officer. And I said, hey, I like that title. I don't see anybody else using that. So I went to the US Patent uh, and Trademark Office and I got the, the, the kind of what's called the service mark, but I got the registered trademark, the R with the circle mm -hmm. for that phrase, you know, chief results officer. So I'm the only one uh, in, in America uh, and, and no one else can use it without licensing it through me. So anyway, that's, that's kind of uh, how I ended up here and, uh, and happy to be with you today. Fabulous. I love hearing that you were able to so many years ago, even before people really thought about being able to work from home and dads, especially, I love that you were able to do that. So, but um, we're going to talk today about the 30 minute hour. So I would love for you first to just give your definition. What does that really mean when someone's listening? What are they going to be learning? Yeah. Yeah. So the 30 minute hour is how to get an hour's worth of stuff done in just 30 minutes. So, so literally you need to, you know, compress time. And mm -hmm. so when I talk to people, especially business owners, you know, overwhelm, you know, I'm a day behind, sometimes more than a day behind on stuff. Uh, and you really need to compress time to be able to move forward and get out of overwhelm and avoid burnout. So this is kind of a technique. Now, the cool thing is, like I was saying about self-fluence, the power you already have to influence yourself. So you know how, and you actually have had these 30 minute hours uh, before in the past. And we're just going to show you how to kind of bring it back to the surface. Mm -hmm. And is this going to be helpful for someone that, you know, not only is working on their own in their own company, but maybe has a team that has interruptions because of things that come through the day? Uh, uh, yes, yes, quite, quite. Uh, you, you're going to learn how to do it for yourself, but then you could also teach this to other people. You could teach it to, to your team. And there's some aspects of it that make you more productive. And, and actually some of it we'll, we'll talk specifically, uh, you know, about how you get interrupted because a lot of times that interruption that happens to you uh, and those distractions, they actually create what I call 90 minute hours, right? That's mm -hmm. where an hour's worth of stuff takes 90 minutes to get done. The actual opposite of what we'd like to do. So uh, you have to be real careful, um, you know, in, in kind of uh, how you manage your time. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, what is your 21 second habit? Uh, so, so the 21 second habit, that is actually how to create a new habit in 21 seconds, not 21 days. So if someone mm -hmm. said it takes, told you that it takes 21 days to create a new habit, they, they lied to you. I'm sorry. You can create new habits in just 21 seconds. So that's, that's another thing that you already have the power to do it. You already know how to do it. And, and for a lot of people, they're like, Hey, Blaine, I'm not good at creating habits. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Hey, did you brush your teeth in the last 24 hours? <laughs> Most of the time they say yes. Maybe somebody has dentures here or there, but mm -hmm. they say yes. And then I say, well, how often do you do that? And they say every single day. I said, well, so you're a habit master at brushing your teeth. And they go, yes. So, so anyway, um, uh, yes, that's another, another kind of self-fluence, uh, you know, um, training that, that we have as well. Mm -hmm. But that seems like such a short amount of time, 21 seconds, right? You know, like if it's something, obviously we have to get dressed every day. We have to make something to eat every day. We have to like, those are kind of things that you just kind of have to do anyway, um, but what if it's something that is, you know, someone wants to exercise more consistently and they say, you know, it takes 21 days to build that habit. So how is it only 21 seconds? Okay. So let, let's break this down a little bit here. And so now actually science, so we can get into a lot of science. I, I usually just like to do things that are very practical that you just try it and you know, it works, mm -hmm. but science like brain science and neuro pathways and things like that actually physically in your brain, it takes about 60 days to wire a habit so that it happens automatically kind of on its own without any willpower. So we're going to hack the system here. Uh, and, and there's three parts uh, to this uh, 21 second habit, a uh, little acronym. I, I say uh, L U L, which, you know, stands for lots of love if you're texting that, but, but L U L uh, we're going to, we're going to, let me break this down with a couple of stories. So the first one is my wife, Beth, uh, luckily, this is past tense, but she used to have nearly 
daily migraine headaches. Mm. And so the doctor said, look, here is this headache log and I need you to fill it out every day. Like what, what's the weather like? What, what triggers could you have had? What did you, what foods did you eat? What's the barometric pressure? You know, mm -hmm. all these different things um, so sh to, to track these migraines. And so she would fill it out for a couple of days then forget to do it. Then she would lose the log and then she'd mm -hmm. have a migraine. Then I'd ask her about the log, bad move. Uh, I learned very quickly, no questions during migraine time. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but anyway, one night I was watching her brush her teeth and, and that's when I realized, well, wait a second, she's a habit master at brushing her teeth, just like I am. And so what we did is we took the headache log and we put it underneath the toothbrush and the toothpaste in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then she went 90 days in a row of filling it out, never losing it. She knew where it was by the first L, the first key in the L-U-L -L is linking. So, so this idea that what the first part of the hack is, is habit linking. So you link the new habit to a habit that you're already a habit master at. Like for example, my wife brushing her teeth, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so the, in habit linking, um, you can create that new habit really almost instantly, right? Less than 21 seconds. Um, but let me talk about the second part. So, so then I said, okay, I want to create some new habits. And in, in the introduction, you talked about one of my habits, uh, now I have a document, maybe I'm up to about 1,560 days in a row, but there were two things that I wanted to do every morning. I wanted to do my Bible app, but then I also wanted to take a mind shower, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so a lot of people take a physical shower every day, but I realized that I needed to like wash my mind out with social media, news media, people, my, you know, even family and friends, they don't know what a chief results officer is. I mean, you just have a lot of head trash. And so I wanted to take that out every morning. And so I thought, okay, what can I habit link this, this new habit to something I do every day, uh, you know, in the morning, no willpower required, I don't have to remember to do it. And for me, what it was, was the cell phone was my cell phone. So my smartphone, sometimes the alarm is going off on it. But the first thing I do in the morning is I look at my cell phone, because I want to know like, what's happened? What emails did I have? What orders have come in? Have my kids texted, texted me? My, my son lives in Denmark right now. A lot of times he'll oh, wow. text me during the nighttime. But I have all these things that that uh, that I want to do, uh, and so what I did is I, I took my phone and I moved all the apps off the home page, and I just put those two apps, the Bible app and an app called Headspace. That's what I use for the mind shower. And so when I opened my phone, I would see those things. And then the second part, the U in the L U L stands for urge, and you need to surf the urge to want to do something to give you the power and the energy to do the habit. So for me, like I have this desire, I really want to see all these things on my phone, right? And I surf that urge, that desire, I use that energy to get in there and do the Bible app and to do the mind shower. Now, you know, I like a 10 minute mind shower, but if I'm short on time, I'll do a three minute one, right? Mm -hmm. But I've done that every single day for 1500 plus days in a row, because it's automatic. I always look at my phone, no willpower required. I have it linked it to something that happens without me having to worry about it. Uh, and then I surf that urge, that desire to do it. And then the last L is leverage, right? And so leverage is another thing that helps you to kind of anchor in the new habit. And so you can get leverage on yourself through pain or pleasure, like through um, like penalties or right. rewards, right? And so, for example, like if you use something that tracks the streak, once you get like three or four days in a row, you have a little psychological leverage on yourself because you don't want to break the chain, right? You don't want to not, uh, you know, to, to lose your streak, right? So, so there's kind of a little reward psychologically to keep it going. Or you can say, if I do this new habit for a full week, I'm going to get this little reward. If I do it for a month, you know, I'm going to buy this new thing I want, right? So you can give yourself rewards. And then on the flip side, you know, you can have an accountability partner or, or mm -hmm. have some kind of penalty if, if you don't do it, right? You know, so there's some kind of leverage on yourself. Uh, you, you know, my wife knows I don't like to wash the big garbage cans outside. So she'll say, look, if you don't get that done, you have to wash the garbage cans outside. And mm -hmm. then if she really wants me to do it, she says, if you don't get that done, you have to go wash the neighbor's garbage can. And I'm like, oh, I'm not touching the neighbor's garbage can. So I'm getting that thing done. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so, so anyway, you can have kind of have a little bit of a, a, a fun with it uh, and have some accountability. But there it is. So it's habit linking, then it's surfing an urge, uh, and then it's it's leverage. And when you combine those things, uh, then you can create new habits instantly. Like I said, 21 in 21 seconds. Uh, again, now there's a lot of things you do every day, right? So, uh, you know, like you, you gave an example of exercise right? So you can habit link the exercise to, to something. I had somebody, um, you know, I said, well, what do you do? When do you want to exercise? They said in the morning, first thing I said, okay, well,
well, what do you normally do first thing? They said, well, I wake up and, th and then I typically take a shower. And I said, well, look, why don't you have it like you can't get in the shower until you've done your exercise program. Mm -hmm. Now, some days they, they like to exercise for 30 minutes. Some days they don't have 30 minutes. Some days they only have three minutes. That's okay uh, because then they're, they're going to exercise and they're going to keep their streak alive by just doing three minutes of exercise, which is better than none. Right. And I like to say win early, win often. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so, so, you know, like to win the battle of the brain chemicals, you want to be winning. Um, so even if you have to dial the resistance down and make your goal very small, keep it going, keep it alive, keep it going. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's worked really well for, for people. So habit linking, urge surfing and leverage. So now that we've heard, you know, 21 seconds, you create these habits. How does that go along with this 30 minute hour that we want to have? We want to be able to improve our efficiency or, you know, what we're doing. So how can we take what's taking us longer and have it happen quicker? Okay. So, so like I said before, powered by self-fluence. So, so the 30 minute hour, your ability to compress time, um, you already know how to do it. And here's the good news. You have already done it. Right. So this is really, really good. Now, before this is super powerful. Uh, and so before I want to make sure that it's used for good and not for evil. Uh, mm -hmm. And so let's say that you and I had four 30 minute hours in a row. So we took four hours worth of stuff and we got it done in just two hours. That leaves us two guilt-free hours to do anything we want. And I don't want I'm going to ask you what you what you would do, but I don't want it to be work. Okay, mm -hmm. I know we're probably, you and I were type A, we, we, we work, work, work all the time, right. but let's say it's not. So for me, if I had two guilt-free hours, okay, I would probably take a nice Peloton bike ride. I like like the Peloton bike. I go for a hike. I like to get out outdoors. I probably connect with some old friends. I, I, don't, I feel like I don't do that enough. I, I really would like to do that more. Uh, and then I work from home. So I would probably do the good old fashioned nap, a little power nap, but that's what I would do. What, what would you do if you had two guilt-free hours? I would either read, uh, crochet. I like to make gifts for other people that are you know having babies or things like that too. Or if my grandchildren when we're around, I would definitely be spending it with them. <laughs> nice, nice. Perfect. So what I want people to do, I want the listeners to do is to take a little bit of that and put some of those things back in your day as you begin to start to compress time. So let's talk about it. All right. So what do you think is the, mo the, the most productive day of the year for people? This is a day where the ordinary person gets three to 10 times more done than an ordinary day. Now that's three X to 10 X. We're only, you're the bookkeeper. We're only looking for two X, uh, <laughs> right. you know, so we're only looking for two X, but people are three to 10 times more productive on this certain day of the year. Do you know what day of the year that is? Well, I'm thinking it might just be before a vacation or something, not maybe a specific day of the year. Yes, that is what it is. That is the day. So the day before vacation, people are three to 10 times more productive than any other day. And all you need to do is to bring back some of those things that you did on the day before vacation. Uh, so I have a little, um, a little acronym called PDF. Now, PDF, people know, uh, hey, email me the PDF or right. print out the PDF. So, so that stands for portable document format. But in our case, uh, what I want you to do is when you think 30 minute hour, think day before vacation mode, PDF. And PDF stands for plan, delegate, focus, right? Plan, delegate, focus. And let me unpack each one of those. So what happens is when the day before vacation, you all of a sudden you become this like master planner person. <laughs> so the day before the day before vacation, you write out the plan. This is what I got to do today. You actually literally schedule most of the day, sometimes down to the minute, right? So that's mm -hmm. the first way to have a 30 minute hour is just to plan your day better, right? Um, on the day before vacation, people typically wake up 30 to 60 minutes earlier than a normal day. So you want to, you wake up 30 minutes earlier, you have a 30 minute hour right there because you just got an extra 30 30 minutes, right? Um, but you really plan out the day and you have a clear vision for the day. You know what has to get done and what doesn't have to get done. That's just mm -hmm. as important, uh, you know, for the day. And you're using in your planning, you're using the 80-20 rule. So most people know what that is. That's 20% of what you do produces 80% of your results. And on that day before vacation, you're like all focused on the 20 and mm -hmm. you're literally ousting the 80, you, you know, mm -hmm. that stuff that, that doesn't produce, you don't have time for that. Right. Uh, and if you think about all the things that don't happen on the day before vacation, there's no chit chat, there's no long <laughs> internet searches, there's no chasing right. shiny objects. There's no, you know, big, long emails and different things like that. You're really kind of on point on focus. So the first part of that is planning. The second part is delegating. 
Now, the day before vacation, you think who before do? You think mm. who before do? So you think who could do this before you go do it? And you become, again, like a master planner, a master delegator. And you, you know, since you're going away, you have to delegate right? So bring some of that back in, right? Uh, you know, defer things and delegate things. My wife, who also uh, works from home, you know, she'll be like, hey, I'm going to run some errands, you know, can I do anything for you? Boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom. That's a 30 minute hour, because she saved me from having to go to the post office or the bank or, or right. whatever. Uh, you know, I'm looking to delegate those things out, especially also things that I don't like, uh, whether it's yard work or cleaning, or, or meal prep, uh, you know, all these different things that I'm delegating out, but but you're, you know, be open to that delegation and look for that uh, delegation. And then the most powerful part, the F, the focus. There's this weird thing about the day before vacation where you have this fierce focus. And this is what creates the most 30 minute hours and also avoids the 90 minute hours, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that that focus is, um, you know, there's no idle chit chat. There's like I said, there's no long responses. Um, and on the day before vacation, you use the most powerful results word. It only has two letters in it. And that is the word no. You become Dr. No. Uh, and so someone will say, Blaine, can you do this? Can you do that? No, 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 no. I'm like a no machine, Dr. No on the day before vacation. So bring that back. The more times that you say no, make no your default answer. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's how, how you're going to kind of get your time back. Um, you also, your focus, you you stay on schedule that day before vacation. So I use a lot of timers. I have a little card here that says day before vacation mode to remind myself, but I use a lot of timers. Um, so I'll tell Siri, hey, set a timer for 15 minutes, um, you know, or 30 minutes or an hour, whatever it is, I'm using timers. That's going to be able to uh, compress time uh, for you. And then the, the focus part is you become a tasking master. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is there's three types of tasking, single, multi, and batch. And so I get the most 30 minute hours from single tasking. Now, single tasking is where it's some job that only you can do. Um, like for me, I, I have to write articles for mastermind groups. And so writing the article, I can get an hour's worth of article writing done in just 30 minutes if I will go into single task mode, meaning I shut down all the browser windows and everything. I just have the one that I'm typing in. My phone is in airplane mode. My door is shut, you know, and I am, the whole world is, is, is pushed out uh, and I am focused in on just that one thing. Uh, and that that will bring you a 30 minute hour. Now, sometimes I get this, the, the monkey mind and some ideas will come into me during my single focus time, but I just, I have a piece of scrap paper. I'll write that idea quickly, put it aside for later. Uh, so I capture it, but I get right back to what I'm doing. So that single focused, that single mindedness, that uh, that can generate a lot of 30 minute hours. Then multitasking sometimes gets a bad rap, but it's where you can do two things at the same time without sacrificing the quality of either one. So mm -hmm. day before vacation, you're going to, let's say you have three errands to run, you know, you're, and I'm going to be in the car for 30 minutes. Well, I can drive the car, hands-free phone safely and talk on the on the phone right so uh, so instead of listening to 80s music like i normally might do you know on the day before vacation i'm making those calls i'm getting mm -hmm. two things done at the same time maybe exercise i used to uh, like to be with the family but i also like exercise so we would go you know, play tennis together, right? So you're doing two things at the same time, um, you know, without sacrificing the quality of, of either one. And it could be when you're doing chores or doing things around the house, you could also be listening to this great podcast, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the last one is batch tasking. So batch tasking is where you batch things together that go together, right? So if I do all my calls at, a, at one time, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be more efficient. If I do all my computer work at, at one time, if I batch all the context of working with other people. This is what we talked about earlier. Um, so if you have if you have a, a, a team that you're working with and you say, look, from nine to 11, I'm going to be in single task mode. You know, don't don't interrupt me unless there's a fire in the building, um, you know, and then at 11 o'clock from 11 to 1130, we're going to batch all the questions together. All the questions mm -hmm. you have for the day for me, we're going to batch them and do them in that moment there. Right. That's su super uh, efficient. If you're going to go run errands, right, you batch them all together. You don't run an errand, come back, run an errand, come back. So inefficient. My wife and I, we used to text each other all day long. And that was interrupting because it was like you, you see this text message come in. So now we have a shared note on our iPhones and we just put the stuff in there. And then we typically have lunch together. Then when we're with that person in the context of the person, we bring up that list and then we go through all those things. Super, mm -hmm. super uh, efficient. And then finally, the last thing that happens on the day before vacation, why you get so much done. 
uh, is that you release your inner perfectionist. So you mm. release that inner perfectionist and done is better than perfect. And you know, you, you know, you're, you're short on time. You're going on vacation. You're leaving. You have to get it done. And it's okay that it's not perfect. It's okay that you delegate it and they only do an 80% job as good as you, uh, you know, you're okay with that because done takes precedence over perfect. Uh, and mm -hmm. so putting all that stuff together again, remember 30 minute hour day before vacation mode. Now, not the stress of, of it, but bring back the productivity of that through PDF plan, delegate focus. Right. I mean, that sounds like a great way to implement things, but obviously things are going to come up that are unexpected as well. So if you've, you know, planned your day, you've, you know, figured out you're going to batch certain things or you're going to do certain things. And then, you know, something happens. What do you say, you know, to someone who's like, yeah. well, how do I handle it? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a good question. So what happens is um, there's a big difference when you plan out your day uh, and you do this next day planning. Uh, when you wake up, um, you know, it's best to put kind of the most important stuff first before mm -hmm. the day kind of takes hold of you, right? But if you have your day planned out, you tend to stay on track more, you're less distracted. Now, urgency does creep in, right? So, mm -hmm. so you know, if, if you have a lot of urgent things that, that are creeping in, then yeah, you, you, you plan for that, right? You, you have a looser schedule, right? So you might mm -hmm. even, you might even put it in, right? Uh, you right. might have some um, pro proactive urgency time where, you know, you, 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 um, so I've got some business owners that they leave an open hour, like mm -hmm. before lunch and before the end of the day to handle emergencies, to handle urgencies, right? But if something comes along and it's higher priority, then you do that thing. That's okay. Uh, you know, you, you got that thing done that you that needed to get done, um, you know, and, and, but the key is that you know your plan, right? The reason right. you get so much done the day before vacation is because you know your plan and you're not, you're, you're just, you're not as susceptible to distractions to shiny objects, right? Mm -hmm. And to things that might, uh, things that other people think are urgent, <laughs> but you don't think they're urgent, right? Mm -hmm. So the other big thing is if you're dealing with urgency and results is to set up boundaries and really make sure you're dealing with the urgency, right? With real urgency for you. And so like if a customer has an issue, that's like real urgency, right? But if somebody else is, is just trying to, you know, get a hold of you for some reason or something like that, that's not true urgency. So, so set some boundaries, right? I, I, um, I go into airplane mode a lot. Uh, so I, I turn my phone. It's not just for the airplane. I turn my phone on airplane mode and, and sometimes people can't get a hold of me. Uh, and that, that can cause some problems, right? There was one day where I got a lot of stuff done. I'm like, man, this is one of my most productive days, days ever. And I realized, oh, I never took my phone off airplane mode. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I had maybe six, seven hours in airplane mode. So when I turned my phone back on, it, it, it blew up like, like the fireworks on the 4th of July, right? I had all these things, but you know what? I triaged all that stuff in less than 30 minutes. Mm. And if I would have handled that stuff during the day, my day would have been shot. My day would have mm -hmm. tried. And some of those things got handled. Like some of those things that I didn't, you know, by the time I got back to the person, they were already done. Right. So, so right. again, you have to know yourself, um, but putting up boundaries for yourself and giving yourself more time to do what's important to you. That is, 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 is critical. And a lot of times, most entrepreneurs are a day behind. I like to move mm -hmm. them from a day behind to behind, to caught up, to ahead, to a day ahead. So like me, I like to live what I call a day ahead life. So when I wake up, there's no to-dos. Like they're already done. Like I'm working mm -hmm. on tomorrow stuff. Now I might have appointments like this podcast, but all my to-dos are to done. So I have a lot of flexibility actually in my day to look at opportunities, to handle urgencies, because I've gotten to that point, but how did I get there, right? How did I get there? Because I, I operated this day before vacation mode enough days in a row, and I said no enough times uh, to stop the inflow of stuff uh, so I could actually get all the other stuff done. Uh, and when I get overwhelmed, it's, it's typically because I said yes too much. Mm -hmm. Well, I know we're coming short on time, but I think this has been great information. I know it's probably just the tip of the iceberg. So I wanted to just give you the opportunity to share an offer and also how listeners can connect with you if they want more information. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll just make it real easy. Um, there's a website you can go to blainetedx.com. So B L A I N E T E D X.com. And there you can opt in and get. I did a, a TEDx talk on this concept of white table, what you think about, you bring about, and I have a little bit of a mind hack in there. Uh, and I show you how you can remind yourself of your most important goal uh, around 100 times a day automatically. Uh, so, so I go through that in that TEDx talk. And then if you opt into that, you'll have my email address. We'll be connected. If I can serve you in, in any way, I'd be happy to do that. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Blaine, for being a guest on my show and sharing information on this topic. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And, and I'll leave you with this. The bad news. The bad news is that time flies. The good mm. news, you're the pilot. So mm. pilot well, my friends. <laughs> Perfect. That's a wonderful, com that's a great concept to, to think through. So um, I do also want to thank the listener though, too, for tuning in. I hope that you found this topic interesting and that answered some questions on the 30 minute hour. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to Blaine or send us a message at media at abandp.com. And would you please share our show information with those you know and leave a review on your favorite platform? I'd really appreciate your support. I hope you can join us for our next episode, SEO, social media marketing, and Google ads. And please remember you can connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is abandp.com. You can find the podcast posted on multiple favorite podcast platforms, including Google, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and iTunes. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next time. Have a terrific day.